Welcome to Lawrence Place Dyson Sphere Program, now sponsored by Trefoil.be. Follow the link in the description to get 20% off your new gaming server. And so, let's see, since last week, what have I been up to? Well, the, first, the main thing I've done, I think, at the moment, or the most, most, the thing that's got me the most gain through the game, and the first thing I want to talk about, is this extra stack of these uh, Matrix Labs here. So, obviously doing a lot of science in these sort of games is very, very important. You can see I've got a research running away down here, just to get some load on the, um, on the system. And I've got my four labs over here that are that are working away, doing all of that research, and then another four that are feeding in the blue blue science packs. But the red science packs take a bit longer to build. Um, let's see if I can find out how, how what the difference is. So there's uh, three seconds to make those, six seconds. So they take literally twice as long. So I've got actually I've got slightly more than twice as many um, machines over here making them, which might be why this one's gone to sleep. But the thing I've I mentioned it last week, but the thing about Dyson Sphere Program, which is quite interesting, is that a few of the buildings, if you want to get a bit more throughput, you can just stack them on top of each other like this. Now, as so far, the only ones I'm aware of that you can do this with are these matrix labs, the storage crates, so the the, um, the yes, yep, storage crates, and the big fluid tanks. So, but it but it does mean you get a little bit of extra space, to, and apparently I can't line these things up, but never mind. But it means you get you don't take up quite as much space when you want to add add in an extra five of them. So I've got obviously five five in each stack here, and these are running. They're being fed by the hydrogen that's coming in here, and the um, enriched carbon I think it's called coming in on the other side. And so in order to get this going, I had to do a bit of in order to get this working up to the, at this sort of speed, the speed I wish to become accustomed to. I had to do a bit of expansion over here. So, so um, the, the first thing that was a problem was the amount of hydrogen I was creating. So to solve that, I thought, well, okay, that's fine. I've got these, I had these three machines here that were refining crude oil into refined oil and hydrogen. That wasn't producing enough hydrogen, so sure, that means I just need to make another, um, another some more machines that are gonna make the hydrogen. Simple. So I put in these machines here, and that, that basically worked. They were producing, they're producing hydrogen then at slightly more than twice the rate, because it's three on the side, four on the side. That's, that's how numbers work. But then I ran into the obvious problem from there, which is I ran out of input. So this this one oil mine here wasn't capable of producing it fast enough. So I then went off way across the other side of the planet, which you can barely see because it's nighttime at the moment. Actually, it's daytime where it's dawn where the other mine is. So I put down another um, another oil mine over here with some wind turbine to give it give it the power it needs. Uh, and then that's passing the um, passing the oil down this long belt here, where it's then being mixed mixed in with the other oil supply in this splitter here. And that means that we've got. A, a, a greater supply coming through and we can pump that through and, and keep all these machines happy. So that kind of solved that problem. However, I almost immediately or fairly quickly ran into another problem and that was that I had too much refined oil. So this bottom, this tank here, which was the only one I had at the time, filled up, it got up to its 10,000 oil and was full. So the whole system ground to a halt. So I stacked another couple of these on top of it. However, I also discovered another recipe for making things so these, these uh, oil refineries here are doing a different recipe. They're doing some sort of cracking recipe that takes in a bit of hydrogen and some refined oil and turns it into energetic graphite and, and more hydrogen. So you put in two hydrogen, you get out three. I think, I think that's the ratio. Um, but but, 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 in order, but you, you also turn some oil into some, into some carbon as well. And so that is capable of turning in a, bit, it's a little bit like the uh, Covarex process in, um, in Factorio, in that it takes in a bit of what you want and produces slightly more of what you want in, in exchange for some, some of what you don't want. So in order to get that sort of balance, I put the, um, I put the inserter that takes the uh, hydrogen in after the inserter that brings the hydrogen back out again. So hopefully they'll sort of loop around a bit like that. However, it did occur to me that I put this in the wrong way round. I should have put it so that these machines would be used first and then these machines would be used afterwards if these ones are running out. Um, but I haven't done that. The, the, these ones are filling up the same belt. That said, the demand on hydrogen when everything is running is sufficient. As you can see, my, my overall buffer is gradually shrinking. So we are pulling from absolutely everything. The other advantage of this, and where I've actually done it correctly, is that we're producing a bit of extra of the enriched carbon here. And that's being passed around, and that's going through in front of these machines, before these machines. So these ones are being the sort of the secondary um, output for it. So I've done it the right way around over here. I've just done it the wrong way around over here, and we'll um, maybe at some point I'll, I'll switch that around. However, I am also aware that at some point in the not too distant future, I'm going to need to start using this oil in order to make plastics for that, and that's going to be for the next science pack. So at the moment, yeah, things things are ticking over okay. I can I can science reasonably effectively. Um, and it is, as you can see, it is it's still running, running merrily away down there. But there are some slight, slight issues that I'm going to need to think about in the future. 
However, that's an, that's an issue for the future. So let's come back over here and charge my mech back up because I'm going to need that later. Zut, charging, charging, charging. So yeah, we've got these um, these big wireless power towers, and if the mech is standing within their coverage area, the big blue circle around it, then it charges its battery from there rather than getting the rather than getting its power out of from burning uh, solid fuels and things like that. <clears throat> so uh, yes, that so I've got that that working, and I did a few other things as well on on this planet. I've um, I expanded out the iron production. Was that? I think that might have been last pre the previous week, though. Go away. Um, I've also put in a few more buildings along here. So we've now got. We, we had this already in the previous one, but I put in. I'm now assembling. What am I doing along here? Um, making oil refineries on the off the bus, making splitters, making smelters, making storage crates, and making mining drills. So basically, I've just extended the bus along a little bit to make all of these extra things that I'm that I'm using in spare relatively large quantities just so I don't have to make them all in it in, in, by hand and so I can just come along and go oh I need a load more stackers grab and on a similar note I realized I was running out of some of the other things I was needing or just wasn't getting enough of them at once so I've got a, um, a storage crate here that's being two, two storage crates actually they're being filled up with the splitters and the uh, and the wind turbines so I can make sure I've always got lots of those available whenever I need to do an expansion rather than again just having to pocket craft because that takes that that slows me down it means I spend a load of time grabbing resources off the belts and stuff like that it's not it's not ideal and this is very much your uh, your Factorio main bus that I've got growing along here, and it, it it's, it's working well. It's it's a main bus mall sort of thing, and yeah, I'm getting all of the things I need from this, so that's that's good. Now, what's quite interesting is, apart from the science packs, it's, it's notable that I haven't had to expand out any of these productions to have multiple machines making anything yet. Um, there might have been some of the earlier ingredients that I've doubled up on. Um, yeah, we've got two machines making the the magnets over here, but there's still only one making cogs, only one making um, bells, only one making coils. I've upgraded a few. And, oh no, I've got two making green circuits. That's something that's getting we're getting through quite a lot because they're an ingredient for science. So that's that's something we're using quite a lot of. But mostly, the one mach single machine for each one so far has been has been doing me pretty well. So generally, generally quite happy with that. So the next thing to think about is, of course, the next science pack. That's what you do, isn't it? That's how you play one of these these uh, factory games. Is you 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 build you build out until you've you sort of you feel like you've conquered whatever you're trying to work on at the moment and then you go okay i've got i've reached a suitable point let's make things harder let's try and make another science pack so i started looking at yellow science and this requires well you can't tell very easily from the from the um, icons here but those are diamonds and titanium crystals so diamonds it turns out are actually fairly easy you just take in um, the enriched carbon you put it through a furnace again and apparently the arc furnaces are capable of producing enough heat and pressure to turn carbon into diamonds so that's going to be fairly straightforward I can do that I've got a nice supply of the enriched carbon and I'm building up a, an improved supply of it with the new oil processing system so I can just turn some of that into diamonds we'll need probably quite a lot it's what is it? it's, it's one per science pack but I get but I, you get through a lot of science packs that's how science goes more tricky, surprisingly, is this one, the titanium crystal, because that requires three titanium ingots and a, what do they call, organic crystal. Um, the organic crystals are okay. Um, now, okay, I've been burning all of my um, all of my wood and all of my leaves that I've been gathering, so I can't really use the bottom recipe there because that requires wood and leaves, and I've been passing, I've been burning all of those to power the mech because I didn't see any use for them at the time. However, conveniently, there's another recipe. And this one takes plastic and refined oil. Now, refined oil I have plenty of because that that comes out of the um, that comes out of the oil refining process where I'm making the hydrogen. Um, I can't see it on here because it's a fluid and I can't do fluids in my own in my inventory. But never mind, that's that's okay. But in order to make the plastic, that requires oil and um, enriched carbon. So again, that's all a lot lots of the sort of the the um, oil processing stuff that's going on uh, over there, just uh, almost uh, just almost over the horizon. So I'm going to need to. Um, pull out from there create lots of uh, basically pull off off the carbon creation system which I've got quite a bit of and also the um, the oil the refined oil and and process some of that so that's going to get through at least some of the oil I've got kept in these tanks over here now uh, I don't I, I currently don't have any clue as to what the balance is going to be like whether I'm going to regret reprocessing the crude oil into um, into hydrogen and sorry repro the, the refined oil into hydrogen and and carbon and whether I should actually just be pulling it from coal but we'll we'll, we'll see how that goes I mean I think at the moment I've got enough of a buffer there that I'll have I'll have enough time to think about it and see how it's going so that's the that's the organic crystals. They're they're going to be made from plastic, which is made from the oil and the carbon. So I've got that, but I need to, I need to make it into, into here and some water as well. But that's easy. I've got lots of lakes around. I'm assuming I can just pump it out of those. 
but then we also need these titanium ingots and titanium ingots come from titanium ore no surprise there but the problem is there is no titanium on this planet uh, you get tiny amounts from some of the processings you do so I think sometimes if you process stone you might get a tiny little bit of titanium ore out of it but there are no actual proper titanium supplies on this planet so I can't do anything anything about that just yet so I did a little bit of looking around uh, so that planet, or that moon rather, is, is no use for this sort of thing. We've got a gas, gas giant here, but that's that's no that's no use either because I haven't. I, I, I you can't land on a gas giant. It, it, it's gas, gaseous and giant. So whilst there is there is tech in the future to collect hydrogen from there and deuterium as well, apparently, um, that's no use for getting getting me the titanium I need. So I looked further afield, and there's this planet here, um, Alifa Three. Which has, if we look over here, we can see it's got it's got iron and copper, great, and stone and coal, also mildly useful. Um, but it's also got silicon and titanium, so that's two new resources that I haven't um, I haven't I haven't started started harvesting yet. And the titanium there, that's the one that I need. I'm I'm, I'm sure I'm going to need silicon soon because we'll have electronics to do. Although I am able to make green circuits without it, it turns out. But I'm sure I'm going to need it at some point. But titanium is the one I specifically need right now. Another notable thing that I didn't notice before I went off there, but have now um, realised, is that we've also got a wind energy ratio down here. Well, this only has 40%, whereas the planet I'm on at the moment is 100%. So we're going to get a bit less power from the wind turbines out there. Okay, so let's go out there and have a look at what's going on on Alifa 3. So to get to another planet, you select it in the map like this. You click on the indicator button, and then you get this blue line drawn from wherever you are. It's a series of arrows, I think, isn't it? Um, I can't see it very well. Where is it? There it is. Yeah, it's a series of arrows pointing at where you want to go. So let's switch back to back to this view. Go back into the mech, and I've now got... Yes, there's, there's my line of arrows going off into the sky, pointing at Alifa 3. Great. So one of the new tricks my mech has learned is to blast off and leave the atmosphere like that it's called sail mode and you can then point it where you want to go using the using the um, the mouse like this and then press w to make it point in that direction so that's that's good i'm now pointing in the right pointing towards it but i'm going fairly slowly and as you can see it's quite a long way it's 2.8 um, au off to, to get to that or 2.8 a to get to that planet so it's quite a way so i can now use some power from my mech to speed up and head over there a bit more quickly now it's just occurred to me I forgot to pick up a load of fuel before I uh, set off. So I'm going nice and quickly now because I've just dumped the entire mech's entire battery into, into speed. So this is going to get me over there reasonably quickly. But you're supposed to take a load of fuel with you and dump it into and dump, dump it into the fuel chamber on the mech so you can keep charging it up again and keep it keep it suitably powered. I haven't done that, so I might be trapped on the other planet, which is a little bit unfortunate, but oh well. I should have grabbed some hydrogen or some oil or something like that before before I set off. Um, but Never mind. One of the slight problems with this is that planet is actually moving. So as the mech flies, you can see it's now not actually pointing straight towards it. So every so often you need to course correct a little bit by pointing pointing the mouse. I mean, I suppose what I should do is is course correct to pointing a little bit ahead of it so that I'm um, as it pans across in front of me, it'll 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 get there. Now this is no Kerbal Space Program. I don't need to um, try and develop tr try and uh, get a, a nice sort of transfer orbit to go between between planets i can just point straight at it and blast away and things will probably be all right um, i think i'm actually looking at it from this direction because yeah um things will be okay as I, as I fly over there you can just go in a more or less straight line um but that's probably a good thing because trying to combine this and kerbal will probably melt my fragile little mind so yeah, here we are flying over to um, that thing, the uh, next planet. As you can see, I, I set off from here, and I'm take, it, it taking a, I'm having to fly quite a long way. If I'd waited for the the two planets to be more or less aligned, then I've, I would have had a much shorter flight. But since flying is just take off, dump all of your energy into speed, and then just wait. It doesn't really matter too much. If I run out of things to say, then sure, I'll speed this bit of the video up. But basically, it's it, it doesn't it, taking an inefficient transfer route doesn't really matter. Okay, there is an achievement for making a spectacular fail of your of your flight, which is interesting. Um, but I, d I don't. Oh, that's a problem. I don't have the energy in my mech to um, to adjust my course. That's a problem. Um, it is charging very very slowly from what I have to assume is perhaps solar power or something like that. Um, but I am actually going to just completely miss this planet because I didn't plan ahead properly and, and bring any fuel with me. Uh, where is it? There it is. This is what we call a problem. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to um, now 
well, there's nothing I can do about this at this point. I'm gonna, or well, I technically there is. I could, I could wait until that very slow trickle charge happens until I've got enough power to stop and then point back in the right direction. But since this is just a catch-up video, I'm going to reload and um, and fly over there properly. So I'll, uh, <laughs> yes, I shall fix this and see you there in a second. There we go, much better. I'm on approach now, and this time I've brought a load of hydrogen to burn in the in the mech in order to keep it keep it powered, keep it running, keep it fueled. I've even brought a little bit of um, oil as well and, and some carbon in case of emergencies. So we are now going to um, crash land on this planet, and conveniently, or or not as the case might be, <laughs> that was not how it was supposed to go. Um, that was supposed to be a, a land land on the planet, but I, I pulled up in an attempt to sort of try and... Well, firstly, to not crash into the planet, because that feels a bit wrong. But also to try and um, to try and find the, the part of the planet that I actually wanted to go to, rather than just um, rather than landing randomly anywhere on it. Now, at the moment, I'm trying to turn around, but I don't have very much power available, so let's slow down a little bit first. I seem to be able to bleed off speed quite quickly and easily. Maybe this is what I could have done last time if I was desperate. Get my speed down to... I and mean, as it is, I seem to have gone into a fairly um, eccentric orbit around the planet, which is not ideal, but... <laughs> yes, welcome to Lawrence isn't very good at flying spaceships. <laughs> Let's try and turn it towards there anyway. I think, oh yeah, yeah, we are making progress. I've got enough, just about enough power to point the point the mech back at the planet. Okay, this time, this time we will just do a straight up crash land on the planet and then worry about where I actually want to go from there, or maybe even use map mode to have a, have a look around. <laughs> Slightly frustratingly, when you're when you're on one planet, you can't have you can't look at the terrain on another planet. You can see you can see it as a sort of a um, a large grid blob, as you saw when I when I looked at them, um, but you can't actually see what's been built on it or what the terrain looks like or anything like that. You just get a sort of gent vague impression of the planet, which is a bit of a shame because it makes it a little bit hard. It makes it harder to make these um, these catch up videos. So I can't go and then look at this planet over here. But never mind. That's, uh, unfortunately, the game doesn't seem to be made with with making catch up videos in mind. <laughs> I guess this is this is what you need the navigation satellite from um, Factorio Space Exploration for. Um, but sadly, I don't seem to have that. Okay, so here's the planet. Let's land. Let's land. I said. There we go. Landing seems to be just you fly into the planet, and no matter what speed you fly into it at, it's absolutely fine. You don't get hurt. So somewhere on this planet. I can't remember where I put up a small mine. Yes, here it is, a small mining morning mining outpost. So let's go and try. Let's go and head over to that. If I can even, where is my where is my robot? I don't know where my robot is, but that's the that's that. So okay, so I want to go that way. At least until I run out of power. So here is my new mining outpost. So what I, I start off, I brought a load of soul, a, a load of uh, wind turbines over because that seems like good free unlimited power, and yeah, it's, it's okay, but the problem is, as I was hinted at earlier, they're only running at 40% capacity, 40% yield, so they're producing less than half the amount of power I expect them to, and I didn't really bring as many over as I meant to, so I need to come back out here at some point with a lot more wind turbines and just generally upgrade this facility. But in the meantime, we've got a titanium mine running here, so there's some titanium veins, a mining drill running off that, feeding into two smelters, um, because that's all I could afford with my power budget. And then dumping out into these into these storage containers. So I've got nearly half a storage container full of titanium. So the idea is that I'm going to build this up, and then every so often I'll come out here, fill my mech up with all, with as much of the titanium as I can carry, and then fly it all back to the other planet in order to you know do this do the useful stuff with it. I've put in multiple multiple storage chests here because these these as I said earlier these also stack, and that means there's room for what there's 3,000 per thing, so 9,000 titanium. So that's going to be pretty good. We're going to have lots and lots of room there, and potentially enormous amounts of it available. The fact that I can only carry 6,000 is uh, neither here nor there. I've just sort of made this as, wanted to make this a, a decent size. So then also on this planet over here I've got a silicon mine. It's exactly the same process. It's being mined here. It's going into a into a refinery and being turned into silicon ingots. Are they, are they called ingots? The high purity silicons. So again, we've got we've got these being made, but there's only there's only one smell to making these because I didn't have enough electricity to make a second one. Um, so I thought, well, I'll just put one in, and then later when I come back out here and upgrade this area, when I need if I need lots and lots of silicon, then I can put a second one in. But as it is, we've still got 700 and whatever it said on this one. I moused over it, so about almost 700 um, silicon ready. So so there's there's plenty of it there. 
Now, what I'm, going to, what I'm going to be doing in the longer term, I believe, from looking at the researches, up here we see that there is, um, we start off with a planetary logistics system, which unlocks um, these things, which I believe are a sort of a space elevator. And as far as I can tell, because I haven't actually built any of these yet, what this does is it allows you to have space elevators that go up to orbit, and then these little logistics drone things that will fly in orbit around your planet so they will take um, they will take resources from one point on your planet to another point on the planet but they won't take them between planets because it's a planetary logistics system not an interplanetary logistics system and you can, and there's a bit of a clue in the in the icon as well if you if you if you look at it in the right way because yeah you've got these tower things they're on the same planet I suppose and then you've got a you're transporting stuff between them so that I guess would replace some of the really long belts I put in on the home planet but other than that it's not going to be all that useful the exciting one is the one they've, that's been called the Interstellar Logistics System, and that now that gives you a space station, which maybe that clips onto the top of the space elevator. I don't know, but um, and it also gives you logistics vessels. Now these seem to be interplanetary logistics, so you can you can put one of these in, and they'll and then the, the sh these ships will fly from one planet to another. So I could have one of these on the on. Um, I say no, not so. Eris, Eris three, whatever it's called. The, the planet I'm on at the moment, picking up the titanium and taking it back to my home planet and unloading it there. So I'd, I'd then have the supply being brought across automatically, and that would be rather nice. But this is still sort of hopes and dreams away. I'm, I'm, I haven't I haven't got the tech to, to do this yet. But eventually I will. It bugs me a little bit that it's called an interstellar logistics system, because interstellar means between stars. It should either be intrastellar, so meaning around the same star system, or more sensibly, interplanetary logistics. Interplanetary logistics system makes sense, that's why I called my Factorio video that. And that would allow you that, that would mean taking stuff between planets. But there's been a few there are a few mistranslations and um, bad sentence formations in this game so I can just tell they didn't they didn't have a tech writer like me to go through it properly and, 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 and sort everything out but never mind it's still I'm still enjoying it so yes we'll need to get those two those two systems up and well particularly this one up and running at some point because having me carrying stuff around the star system it seems like a bit of a waste of time these games are all about automation and stopping having to do these things automatically especially uh, manually even especially when it takes as long as you just saw it taking to fly in, in order to fly from one planet to the other so I definitely yeah so getting getting that up and running is a high priority but at the moment I've got a supply of titanium being made so I can make a start on those yellow sciences which are required to get things like the interplanetary logistics uh, system um, and lots and lots of other things and then some of its prereqs as well so it's going to be very very useful to have that in order to get this uh, up and working interesting um, Yes, so that's that's basically as far as I've got now. the The next episode will, as I or next stream rather, will be on uh, on Wednesday. So come along then, and uh, that's when I'm going to be looking into trying to get getting yellow science up and running. I'm going to be doing all of that shenaniganery with the um, oil processing that I was talking about at the beginning of the episode, and then getting on to getting hopefully getting the yellow science, and maybe moving on to some sort of little spaceships, maybe even big spaceships. We shall see how that goes, though. So yes, come along then to join uh, join me for that uh, that stream. Monday will have my weekly uh, Factorio with Crastorio 2 and Space Exploration stream. That's the uh, is the uh, the big popular one, so definitely worth coming along to. There's lots lots of exciting chatter going on in there and ideas and things. Um, I set up core mining last week. That was that was a bit of a, a bit of an effort, and, and but uh, quite quite productive. I feel like it's, we've now got free free resources coming through. So now we just need to decide what to do with all those resources. Probably more science packs. I think there's a bit of a running theme here. But then all of these games are like that. You you build up your your factory to the point where you can now build the next science pack, and then you start doing that and, and go from there. There. What else have we got? Yeah, the weekend we'll have these catch-up videos as normal, and so I yeah, encourage you to come along to those and see what's been going on. And also, if you're looking for a server to run your, your games on, we're um, just moving over to um, running... We, we've had some lag issues with um, Factorio last week, so we're going to be moving that on to one of the uh, this week's sponsors' um, uh, services. They, that's that's trefoil.be, and they provide game hosting. They, they sort of con seem to concentrate largely on um, Factorio and Minecraft, but there are a few other games they do as well, which I'm less familiar with. So have take a take a look at their sites. They seem to be interested in, in growing and adapting. So if there's a game you need 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 to have hosted, and they don't do it, go along, have a word with them, and uh, tell tell them I sent you, and they might they might uh, they might be able to um, help you out with that and add something extra in as well. So yeah, lots lots of potential there, and they're they're being kind enough to host host the uh, the the, uh, the Factorio server for us, which is very very kind of them. So I oh, I've run out of core energy again. So I suggest you uh, yeah if you go over there. Um, Check out their um, check out their site, and if you use the link in the description, then you'll get 20% off your first order, and uh, and that'll give you a, a a nice way to try out the uh, try out the services without having to pay quite so much. 
So thank you very much for watching. I shall see you next uh, in the next uh, in the next video. Um, in fact, there'll be there'll be something tomorrow. There'll be a, a Factorio stream tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.